Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to compress byte streams using the Python gzip library. The gzip library is used often in conjunction with libraries like pickle or dill, which convert Python objects into byte streams. We then use the gzip to compress these byte streams before saving them somewhere or sending them across a network. Because obviously in network situations, you want to compress the data as much as possible to make it faster. Similarly, when saving byte streams to a hard disk or something, you want to reduce the amount of space it takes for efficiency. Another common use would be to compress strings. We can convert a string to a byte string by appending a small b before it, or we can use the bytes function. The first parameter is the string, and the second parameter is the encoding. Once this string has been converted to a byte stream, we can then use gzip to compress it. And that's what we're going to do in today's tutorial. We'll compress the string and then observe just how much we were able to reduce its size. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is create a file, a file pointer. We'll do o file is equal to gzip.gzip file. Now, this is very similar to how you've been using file handling up till now. You use the open function, and the first parameter is the name of the file. So we'll do the same thing over here. This can be called compressed file. And the second parameter is the mode, the mode in which you want to open this file. So we want to write data to this file. Okay, we're going to take the string and then compress it and save it into a file. Then over here, we're going to do o file dot write and then write this data this byte stream okay to this file then we'll close this now i'm going to um, do this where i run the code and now i open up the file explorer and we observe just what how, how big is this it's just, it shows as one kb here and that's actually not a good way of looking at it at least on windows what you can do a, a good way of observing the exact size is to do os the os module in python okay then os dot path dot get size and then the name or sorry the file path of your file the file you just created i have all these files in the same folder so i'm not mentioning the full file paths okay okay look here's the output 444 as you can see this is the compressed size now let's try this without the compression Oh, and by the way, WB here means write to binary file. Okay, that's why the B is over there. So when I when I do this normally, I'm going to remove that W, sorry, the B from there. And now we only have W. Okay. Now this is throwing an error because it does not accept a byte stream. So let's just remove that. And now let's run this code. Wait, I should call this uncompressed file, right? And then let's print out the size of this uncompressed file. And then let's observe just how much, you know, of a difference there is. Okay, 752. So 444 versus 752. That is what? 40, 50% roughly. That's pretty good. We can clearly see that gzip is being really helpful over here and helping us save space. Interestingly, this gap can only be expected to increase at least in my opinion. Now, it can vary based on the data you have. Uh, compression works better on some types of data. So sometimes it doesn't work so great. But generally speaking, compression has some overhead and we're dealing with very small data here. This is, this is very less data. The more data we have, the better compression is generally expected to work. So you can expect this gap, this size gap to increase as your data increases. There's actually a setting over here, by the way, in the gzip function called compress level and this takes a value from 1 to 9 and I can't remember what the default value for this is default is 9 all right and 1 is the fastest and produces the least compression and 9 is the slowest and produces the most compression all right so this is just something to keep in mind although I didn't didn't notice a very big difference I actually tried putting this to 1 and I don't think I noticed any difference let's just try that and see what happens 447 okay there's a three byte difference again that's not much but uh this might you know affect you 
if you have some code which needs to go really fast but also needs to be compressed, you might want to choose compress level is equal to one because this is the fastest compression. There's just one more thing I want to show you guys. Currently, I've, I've only shown you how to write to compressed files. What about if you wanted to compress this data within your application and then use this data somewhere, this compressed byte stream, like send it to somebody else through an internet connection or something like that, right? So what you can do over here is compressed data is equal to gzip dot compress and then pass in data over here, okay? This produces the compressed data. And let me just print this out so you can see what this looks like. And I'm also gonna print out the length of this compressed data. Okay, and the length is the same thing that we did earlier, these values. So let me run this. And this is what the byte stream looks like, the compressed byte stream. Okay, and where is the size? Uh, the size is, I don't see it. Let me run this again. Oh, there it is, 428. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure why there's a difference in the size, but okay. Um, yeah, and then to uncompress this, what you can do is print uncompressed, wait, sorry, gzip dot uncompress. All right, and why is that? Wait, sorry, it's a decompress, All right? Then pass in, pass in the compressed data in here, run this code again, and we'll get the uncompressed data. Okay, pretty cool, right? So that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to learn more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in the next video.